If you breathe the coolness of the air, how does it get you? Neurologically, it travels almost instantaneously. But there's another system beyond your neurological system. The pleasantness of the neurological system, once it sinks deeper, sitting here blissfully becomes a normal thing. Why most human beings even struggle to know a little bit of peace or joy in their life? Why most human beings are not able to establish this as their quality? I know too many philosophies have been said, but let's look at it technically, why is it not happening, something so simple? So all experiences of life, how are they entering us? If you breathe the coolness of the air, how does it get you? Neurologically, it travels almost instantaneously. Pleasant. If you eat or taste something pleasant or see something pleasant or hear something pleasant, essentially, First, it touches your sense perception. From there, quite instantaneously, the neurological system takes it up to your brain and creates a pleasant experience or an unpleasant experience. This pleasantness of experience or unpleasantness of experience is not entirely in the stimuli from outside. Partly, yes, it also depends on how you are at that moment. You are in a frustrated, disturbed mood. Somebody plays nice music, oh. <laughs> Yes or no? Somebody playing very nice music, it further puts you into rage. <laughs> so we must understand, there are two aspects to it. One is the nature of the stimuli, another is how we are right now, which means what our impressions are, whatever samskara is, what our karmic substance is. So when everything cooperates and pleasantness happens, you saw the morning sunrise, instead of being irritated, oh God, one more day, you felt, wow, nice. Telling wonderful. Now that's nice. Because the neurological stimuli, the stimuli, when it touches the sense organ, from there, neurologically, it travels almost instantaneously and does things. But there's another system beyond your neurological system, which is the pranamaya kosha, which is as elaborate, if not more elaborate, than the neurological system but it moves, I would say, a hundred times or more slower than the neurological system. If you hold on to the pleasantness of experience, the neurological pleasantness that's happening because you're seeing the sunrise and you're feeling pleasant, usually, wow! <laughs> or something else, or something. Most people do not hold on to the pleasantness of the experience that's happening. They will hop all over the place. So if you hold on, to certain pleasantness of neurological pleasantness. I'm trying to separate these two things. 
due to lack of terminology in English language. What you… let's say you watched the sunrise and you felt wonderful for a moment. That moment is neurological pleasantness or sensory pleasantness. For it to become part of your life energy, you need to hold it. You need to hold on to that experience. You must be able to stay there because it's at least a hundred times lower for lack of exact measure, I'm saying at least. So if you're able to hold on to any, any experience, normally if you can hold on to twenty-four minutes, any experience of sweetness of experience, even if it's taste, taste, smell, vision, auditory. If you do this to yourself, the pleasantness of the neurological system, once it sinks deeper into the pranic system, then sitting here blissfully becomes a normal thing. The sensory experiences, if you stay with it, this will become your quality. It's not something you have to do bliss. The processes of ecstasy were never written down. It is only in the presence of a certain being those things happen. The yogis have many ways of doing it. Certain nadis in the system, that if you activate them, you will be ecstatic. If this humanity overflows, then divinity will come in search of you.